One step up uh, to the next level. This is about moving from one prism, which is a foundation prism, which is all about our personal flow, up to the next prism, which is the enterprise prism, where we have all the flow in the markets. And what's really important about this is not just the distinction of moving up to it, but that there are these three levels, yellow, green, and blue, in which all of this actually takes place. I mean, if you were to pick up books, uh, I, I read so many books when I was uh, in my 20s, trying to figure out like, how to you know, be successful in business. You, know, you could pick up a book like, um, something like Tim Ferriss, you know, The 4-Hour Workweek, which is all about how you make sure that you can go out there and get that freedom to travel around the world. But then you pick up another book like um, From Good to Great by Jim Collins, which is all about like, really creating a, a big business, which actually allows you know, high-performing teams to work together, which is really the total opposite of going out just traveling around the world. Or you pick up uh, you know, a value investor book, uh, like Benjamin Graham's book, uh, or one of Warren Buffett's books, which is, isn't even about you know, being the person out there you know, running a small business or being out there running a big team. It's just investing in other companies. And you could say, well, they're all saying opposite things to each other. They're all, they're all correct, they're all true, but they're all true for a particular level. So when you're talking about like being the solopreneur who can go out there and create a global empire where you're in the center of it and you can outsource the things you want to and you can get that freedom, that's yellow level. That's talking about the player. And the player is the person who can go out there and pretty much has to keep track of everything going on, but can effectively you know, create, just like a guitar player can create music, can create that music on your own. People even come and get attracted to that. However, the problem is the moment you stop playing the music, the music stops. So that still relies on you. With the next level up from that green level, which is a performer, is like the band where everyone's performing. This is high performance teams. All large corporations work this way. And it's actually a very different set of rules you need to work with. And you need to unlearn the things that you get at yellow level, which is independence, to get up to green level, which is interdependence. And then you've then got detachment, the third level, blue level conductor, where you've detached from all the instruments. You're now focusing at the performance. And the only way for a conductor to ever even get on stage and have all those performers actually be willing to, get, to play to your rhythm is you've earned the right to be at that level. You can't just go up there and hope for the best and say, I'm gonna have multiple streams of income and then find out you're the one that has to actually manage all of them because you can't attract the right performers. So this is really about getting multiple teams of income, which comes by getting up one step to one step until you get to the third level at that enterprise prism. However, before we get into what these steps are that you need to follow and how you get from orange to yellow, it's really important also to just look at the mindset, the difference. Because orange is still where you're chasing things. It's where you've learned that there is, uh, there's, an entire, there's an entire world which is being served by our markets, which are the consumers. Just like there's an entire world being served by those playing football who are the spectators. And even at orange level, you're still at that point where you're a little bit anonymous. You're a worker who's out there getting the work done. You're interchangeable. Someone can kind of like, you know, fire you from your job or you can be laid off and suddenly you're back having to kind of figure it all out and chase the next job. So as long as you're out there chasing, that's that whole action. That's very different from when you don't have to chase anymore, which is attraction. It's when it comes the other way. And the best way I have as an analogy of doing, uh, explaining this is talking about the difference of a spectator uh, who's in the stands watching the game of football, who then actually gets on the pitch. Identify your identity is when you say, I'm not gonna be chasing the ball, I'm gonna focus at a position that I'm gonna play. Because the moment you do that, where you say, I'm gonna be the goalie, or I'm gonna be the left wing. The moment you do that is the moment that suddenly you have to stop running. And you have to actually have a team where people can pass the ball to you as well. And when that starts happening, and you actually say, now I'm actually accountable to this, I'm actually gonna show up for the game. Uh, now you're someone that someone's going to rely on to actually want to give you business. That's going to recommend onto other people to give you that business as well. And that's what's absolutely critical to get to yellow level. Now here's the thing. Just like every other level, there are excuses that we actually use that stops us from getting to the next level. So what are the three excuses that someone who's at orange level, who's hard at work, what are the excuses they use which stops them from getting up to yellow level? Here are the three. First one. I'd like to have greater wealth, but it's too difficult. I mean, like that sounds obvious, it's like, well, it's difficult, but it is a fundamental key here that for many of us, we're in a job, and the idea of actually going out there and starting a business seems so complicated. There seems to be so many things we'd need to do, so many things we'd need to learn. And the reason for that is because we went through a type of education when we went to school, which is that we needed to know it all ourselves in order to get going. You know, you probably heard that a lot of the people who are the top entrepreneurs in the world today, 
they dropped out of college. You know, they dropped out of higher education because they didn't have the uh, they didn't have the right skill sets to actually try and know it all themselves. In fact, the way they become successful is they're out there having other people do a lot of the work for them. So if you're at a point where it's like, well, I, I need to learn all this stuff before I can get going, then that's the reason that you're actually getting stuck in the moment. And it's absolutely not what you need to do in order to get going, any more than any football player needs to know all the different parts of the game in order for them to be the one that's going to win the game. You just need to know your part and how you're contributing to the whole. A second excuse that we often use when we're at orange level is, yeah, I'd love to be more wealthy, I'd love to grow more, but it's too risky. And that's because we are taught when we're at school to minimize risk, that we need to learn it all ourselves. Uh, and then we have to have it all in our head before we can even do the exam. Well, of course, that's not how it works when we become an entrepreneur. An academic needs to know in order to do, whereas an entrepreneur needs to do in order to know. They've actually got to get into the game uh, and have others around them who are going to minimize their risk because they already know what they're doing and how to do things. And so one of the most important things about this is the real risk is not doing anything. When you actually say, okay, so I'm willing to put that aside and say maybe it's not so risky, provided I'm working with the right people or taking it in the right steps, then we get to the third excuse. And the third excuse is I don't have the time or the money. Again, that's when we're all thinking that we have to rely on ourselves to make things happen as well. So what I'm gonna do is just share with you a little story of what happens when we say, instead of chasing the ball, instead of being at work a level where we have to work hard to get to it, we can actually pause and be part of a team or part of a larger mission where we can have the ball attracted to us. And what that looks like when we actually make a stand for one thing. And as I say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. So the key thing here is how do you make that happen? What you see in the assessments, as I go through the story, you'll kind of see this come to life as well. But out of the 10 different steps in the assessment, they link to three big questions. The first one is, is your identity defined effectively? Like, is it really clear to everyone in your marketplace what it is that you stand for and how it's so different from everybody else? The second one is, is your identity of value to the market? Because you can have a very clear identity, but if the market doesn't see any value in that, that's really not gonna help you that much and it's certainly not gonna help them. And the third one is, is your identity expressed effectively? You know, are you actually doing the right things in terms of how you're presenting yourself or in the way that you're actually even showing up every day? in your habits, in your actions, which actually link to that identity as well. Here's an example of this, which I talk about in the book, and it's the story of Hattie. And Hattie Hassan, she is someone that I met a series of times because she came out to Bali, she's been out to Asia, she lives in Europe, she's in uh, north of England, and uh, she's a plumber. What's really interesting about a lot of the people who are at orange level, and orange level is the vast majority of the workforce, is that a lot of them aren't even those who are in a job you might be in your own business right now. A plumber, for example, had he had her own business, but she was still at orange level because she had to go out there chasing the business the whole time, which meant that if she woke up one day and, and she wasn't out there kind of knocking on doors to get the business, she, she wouldn't have the money coming in. So when I met with her, she was like, I want to do this differently. I don't want to just keep on chasing the business the whole time. What can I do different? How should I do this? So the first thing is identity. What is it you're going to be unique on compared to everybody else? And on that one, Hattie was like, well, I'm a plumber. I mean, like everyone's, you know, what's the difference of being a plumber? I said, what could you do that would be different as a plumber? And when she went through this, and she actually came from one of our programs in Bali where she actually redesigned her business, where she says, well, you know what? The fact that I'm a woman plumber, that in itself is something which is unique. So maybe I should make that the whole mission of what I'm, what, why I do this. So we said, okay, well, what is it that makes a woman plumber special? And she said some things I had thought about. She said, well, the first thing is that a lot of women want a woman plumber to come into their house because they don't feel safe having a male plumber there. So they'd rather have a woman plumber there. Secondly, the reason that I want there to be more women plumbers is because I'm also someone who believes in equality for all and why should all plumbers be men? So we should actually give women a chance to be able to be plumbers as well. And all they need is the training to do it. So when she looked at how she was going to go about creating uh, a success and grow her business, one thing I'll get onto in a moment is how she was gonna leverage. And she thought, you know what? I could actually leverage this business instead of me being the one being the plumber the whole time. I could actually leverage this by training other women plumbers how to be plumbers as well. And that's when she came up with a new name for her business, which is Stopcox. And Stopcox is a play on words because it's about basically what happens if we actually are focusing now at women being the plumbers instead of the men. And Stopcox in uh, England is also a name for a uh, part of the plumbing system as well as you're actually putting your plumbing together to make everything flow. 
So what happened was she set up Stopcox. She then decided that she was going to go out there with this mission where she was going to be sharing with everyone what made her unique, which was going to be the leading women's plumbing uh, business and license in uh, England. And that has now grown so that you will see if you go look at it online that she now has women plumbers all over England that have actually been trained up in such a way that she now is earning her money as much from the entire network of plumbers as from her going out and doing the plumbing herself as well. Perfect example of how instead of her going out there chasing the business, she ends up with the business coming her way because she's now standing for something very unique. Of course, it's more than just taking the first step, which is identify identity. That's a little bit like getting on the pitch and then just saying, right, here I am. It's the next two steps as well, which we'll get onto. But this first one is so absolutely critical. It's about, think about, like, you got marbles on the bed. Uh, you want uh, your child to go and collect the marbles. Well, there's going to be a pretty big mess if they go try and climbing onto the bed and all the marbles go flying everywhere. But if you actually take that same child and put them right into the center of the mattress and they create that dent, all those marbles just roll your way. Right? That's what we mean by the den in identity. It's about actually creating something which means that everything in the market flows your way, going from action to attraction. Now, there's one final part to this as well, which is critical, which is understanding the wealth equation. And in Hattie's case, this is about understanding that she has a natural genius, which is being a steel genius. And in the examples I've given in the coming videos, you'll see that there are different geniuses that will create their wealth and their flow in different ways. So think about flow as a river. And there's an equation to wealth, which is that wealth equals value times leverage. If you think about the, a river, a river's got a gradient. So there's a height differential which makes flow happen, just naturally. Well, in exactly the same way, money will always flow when there is a value differential. When there's value exchange, money will flow. And the more value the exchange is, the more money will flow. So as a result, we have a way that when we create value, money flows, and we can increase the speed with greater value. But there's also a width to the river. And the more we can leverage that value, which is actually creating the width, is the more we create volume as well. So let's take that and break that down into what the different areas are within the different geniuses. Value is created through dynamo geniuses who have their head in the clouds, or through tempo geniuses who have their ear to the ground. Those who have their head in the clouds will create value through something called innovation. Someone like a Richard Branson or a Steve Jobs will create new things. And just from creating those new products or new ideas, then there's money that will flow their way. The opposite of having your head in the clouds where you're being creative is to have your ear to the ground where you're being sensory. And that's not when you're creating innovation, it's when you're creating uh, value through timing. So for example, a Warren Buffett or Donald Trump through the deals, uh, uh, George Soros through the trades, they're actually creating their, their value and they're creating money flow through timing as opposed to through creativity. And they're the opposites of each other. You can't do both at the same time. You try folding your arms, and you're only doing it one way. And if you actually wanted to do the opposite, you couldn't do both at the same time. And by the way, when you're doing the opposite, it actually feels unnatural. And so as a result of that, you're going to, when you're not thinking about it, go back the other way anyway. I've had examples where I've gone out trying to trade the stock market, and I've just got it wrong because I'm a natural dynamo genius. Um, and I know a lot of people also who are tempo geniuses that have a real time struggling to get the big picture because again, that's not how they naturally do it. Just being aware of this allows you to say which is the right way for you to create your value. And then there's leverage. And on the leverage side, it's about how you take that value and then you increase it. And you can either increase it in the way that a blaze genius increases it. Blaze geniuses are all about the people. So they'll do something called magnify. Like for example, Oprah Winfrey will magnify her brand. And as a result of that, by magnifying it, you're creating one thing, like a brand, and you're making it bigger. Uh, someone like a Jack Welsh became a very successful leader. Uh, same with Steve Ballmer with Microsoft because they've magnified the message within that business. But that's the opposite of someone who's more of an introvert than an extrovert, the steel genius, which is not about how do you magnify, it's how do you multiply. And multiply is how you make things simple and make many. That's what Hattie did. Hattie was basically looking and saying, well, I've got just me and my time. I've created that value. How do I actually create a system or a structure that can multiply that? And because she does that naturally well, that allowed her to be able to then go out and create a system quite naturally where she can say, here's how I do it. Here's how I train other people up to the extent that people are now willing to pay her to get trained up so they can then become part of Stopcox as a woman plumber as well. So once you actually start taking things in a way that's natural to you, it also allows you to help others to get to where they're naturally best as well. And you're gonna find as we go through these next series of videos and these next levels, 
that we get to a deeper and deeper level of sophistication as to how you can go about really starting to create a plumbing system that is now connected directly to the plumbing system in your market. And this first level here is you making sure you're clear on where you're at before you go chasing the ball. It's action. And by the way, if you want to get from action to attraction, you've got to go through this middle part called traction. Action, traction, attraction. Stepping up from one level to the next. Once you go through these 10 steps in the assessment, what you're gonna see is first of all, you can actually then answer these three questions on the pre-flight checklist. Number one, I have a clear path to my ideal identity with role models to follow and a clear identity today that I can express. Number two, I have a reputation in my niche as a distinct leader in my field that creates attraction in business and opportunities. And number three, I have aligned all my actions, messaging and marketing to reflect clearly my identity to my market and the world. You take your current industry and you look at the people who are leading it right now. And without doubt, for those who are at the yellow level, they're doing it because they have got a very unique identity in the market, which is what people are getting attracted to. And we're gonna see in the next two steps how you go about monetizing that.